In this video, we're going to discuss Jensen's Alpha. So Alpha is the portion of the excess return of a security or a portfolio that is not explained by systematic risk. And when I talk about systematic risk, I mean beta. So another way of putting it is that Alpha is the difference between the actual return of the security or the portfolio and the return that's predicted by the capital asset pricing model. So I've got the capital asset pricing model here, and we say that the expected return for a security I or for portfolio P is equal to the risk-free rate of return plus the beta of the portfolio or the security times the market risk premium, which is just the, the expected rate of return for the market minus the risk-free rate. So all this right here is gonna tell us the expected return for that security, that share of stock, or that portfolio. Okay, so let's just say that we calculate this out. We say, okay, for this particular stock, we're expecting a rate of return of 12%. So this is expected rate of return based on cap M. And then in reality, it turns out that we have an actual rate of return of 13%. So we have a difference of 1% here. And so we actually, th this stock, this, sh uh, this stock actually had a, a higher rate of return than was expected according to the cap M. So that extra 1%, that would be the alpha. So we can just add that here. We have a little plus alpha for security I. And we could have an alpha for a security, we could have an alpha for a portfolio and so forth. So if, if you, I rearrange the equation to make it easier for you to solve for alpha if you just wanna know the formula. Uh, so here's an equation to, to solve for alpha. Uh, but I wanna work through an example with, with some more numbers, make it a little more complicated to make sure you understand. So we've got a risk-free rate of return of 3%, let's say, and then we have an expected rate of return for the market of 11%. And then we have a beta, let's, let's say we're talking about a, a particular stock and it, it has a beta of 1.5, okay? So that's a measure of systematic risk. But then the actual rate of return turns out to be 17%. And the question is, what is alpha? Now, if we were talking about a portfolio or something here, you might look and say, hey, it had a return of 17% and the market had a return of 11%. So you might be quick to think, oh, well, then it must be 6% that is the alpha because clearly this portfolio or this stock outperformed the market. But, but it doesn't work like that. It's not that easy because you have to adjust for risk. And so alpha is a risk adjusted measure of return. And so when I say adjust for risk, I mean adjust for beta. We would expect that when the market goes up, that this stock or this portfolio would go up by higher than 11% because it has a beta higher than one. When a stock has a beta higher than one, that means the market goes up, it's gonna go up even higher than what the market did. So of course it's going to outperform the market index. The question is, after accounting for the beta, after risk adjusting, is this actual return higher or lower than what we would have expected? And that's the same as saying, taking the cap capital asset pricing model into account and saying was the expected return, is this 17%? better or worse than, than what was predicted. Okay, so we just take our formula from above and we're gonna plug in numbers. So we've got an actual return of 17% minus the risk-free rate. And then we're gonna subtract this whole thing right here. We've got the beta, we've got the beta times the market risk premium, which is 8%. Okay, so doing a little math, we see that the alpha is 2%. What does that mean? Let's say we're talking about a portfolio of stocks here. The, the fund manager who's managing this portfolio is probably gonna point out and say, hey, look, we actually outperform. If you look at the capital asset price, pricing model, we were supposed to have a certain return, but we actually had a return that was uh, a higher by two percentage points. And so they would say, well, clearly that's due to good management on our part and, and so forth. That would be the argument that's made when you hear about people saying, oh, we're seeking alpha, or we're generating alpha and so forth. That's what they're talking about. Now, if you've ever, if you're familiar with regression analysis, I can show alpha to you in a, a slightly different way. It might make it easier for you to understand. So if we take this equation right here and here over here, we've got the excess returns for the market. Okay, so we have that as our independent variable. And then as our dependent variable, we have the excess return for this uh, security or for a portfolio. So we've got this dependent variable and then we've got our in independent variable. So if we were to plot 
the excess returns of the market and the excess returns of the security, if we were to actually perform a regression analysis, and let's say that we had a line and we did a linear regression, I know it's not exactly a straight line, but imagine that it's a straight line. And then we've got some different points that, that are at actual points, but we, we have this fitted line. We have this fitted line right through here. Okay, and that fitted line is going to cross the, this axis at some point. It's going to cross this axis and it actually crosses it. So it's, it's right here. So when we actually regress with our dependent variable, the excess returns of the security or the portfolio, we regress those on the excess returns of the market. We get that fitted line and the point where it crosses the y axis. That's the intercept. We would call in, like, in terms of statistical analysis, you refer to it as the intercept. Or we can call it in here in finance, we refer to it as alpha. So this is alpha right here, where the, the point where it intersects with the y-axis.